Hey y'all, welcome to Restless Chipotle Kitchen. Today we are making a copycat recipe from Cracker Barrel and if you love their chicken and broccoli and cheddar casserole, you definitely want to watch. I've got to tell you, I absolutely love this dish at, at Cracker Barrel and making it at home is so easy. So I'm going to spray my, my casserole dish, which is thir just a 13 by nine casserole dish with um, cooking spray. Make sure nothing sticks and it's easy to clean. And then I'm going to put chicken breast in there. Now you can use four or six depending on uh, how your family eats. I'm using four chicken breasts for six people um, because I'm not sure who's all going to eat. But, um, but you can use four to six. Either way it'll work in this. And you can cut the chicken breast up in uh, piece, bite-sized pieces and do it that way. Um, I've done that before. In fact, that's how the recipe is written on the blog, but I'm going to make it quick and easy today and do it this way. So I'm going to wash my hands, be right back. All right, then the next thing we're going to do is, remember my homemade seasoned salt recipe? It's on the blog. Um, you can use regular salt and pepper or your own seasoning salt blend or the kind that you like best, but season the chicken with the seasoning salt. And you've got to figure about a teaspoon of salt per pound. This is two pounds of chicken. I'm not going to use two teaspoons of salt because I'm going to be using um, cream of chicken soup and cheese, and both of those things are kind of salty. Your, so your mileage may vary on that one. All right, once we have the chicken seasoned, we're going to set that aside. I use evaporated milk for my casseroles um, and sauces and things to cook with. Um, one, I think it, it makes it a little bit creamier, but the second reason is we don't drink milk very much here, and if I have a half gallon or a gallon of milk in the fridge, more than likely I will be pouring it out. So this is evaporated milk, but you can use whatever kind of milk you want. You can even use a non-dairy milk if you want. And so we're just going to put that in the bowl. And we're going to add cream of chicken soup to that. This is a really nice uh, creamy sauce. And then just whisk that up carefully so it doesn't splash everywhere. And then I'm going to mix in about one and a half cups of the shredded cheese. I'm just going to eyeball this, but um, you can measure it out if you want. I'm going to take my spoon and mix that up and put it in the microwave. All right, that's really hot on the bottom, so I'm going to set that on a hot pad. Um, so you want to microwave it until your sauce is smooth. And um, so you're going to microwave it for like 30 seconds and then stir and 30 seconds and then stir. And just until the sauce gets nice and smooth and the cheese is really well melted, okay? I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute. And get the chicken back out. I'm going to, this is uh, cooked and drained broccoli. I drained it really well. I cooked it and drained it in the colander for about 15 minutes just to make sure that any excess water was off because excess water will cause your casserole to be watery. Um, it, you can use thawed frozen broccoli and you don't have to cook that or anything, Just but you do need to thaw it and you do need to drain off the extra water. So just take your cooked broccoli and put it right over the chicken, maybe break up any giant pieces like this one. Just like that. Spread it around really well so that it's even. Then we're going to take the sauce, stir that up good, and we're just going to pour it right over the top. 
once you've got the sauce on there, just move it around so that it's covering everything. And be sure not to lick the spoon because this is raw chicken. I have a tendency to lick spoons when I'm done and I have to remind myself not to do it. Push that down in there. All right. I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute. Um, the topping is Ritz crackers. You could use breadcrumbs too. I like the way that the Ritz crackers are on top of this. They're buttery and kind of salty and I just like how it is. It doesn't have to be totally um, fine crumbs. You can have different texture, a little texture in there is not going to hurt it at all. I don't know, this is kind of cathartic. Take out your frustrations on the crackers. You can, if you want to do this really fast, you can throw this in a blender. You can throw it in a food processor. You can roll it over, you know, you put it in a uh, Ziploc or something and roll over it with your rolling pin. But mm, this is easy. It's quick. And there. We've got them all pretty much uh, broken up into pieces. Just look for any really big pieces. If they, Again, if there's a little texture in there, it's not going to hurt it. Now you're just going to take the melted butter and pour it right into those crumbs. My butter cooled off a little bit so it got a little thick. And then just stir those right around. And if you happen to see any big pieces, you can go ahead and break those up with your fork. But you want to get the crumbs all good and buttery. You can use a little more butter if you want. I use a fourth of a cup. You could use six tablespoons. I wouldn't use more than that. I think it would make the cracker crumbs soggy. But uh, use what you need to use to make it the way you like it. Okay. Now, I'm telling you, this is the quickest stuff ever. Now, we're just gonna take the remaining cheese and put it over the top, just like that. As evenly as possible, nice even layer. And then, if you were gonna freeze this, you would go ahead and cover it with um, Aluminum foil. I usually cover it with plastic wrap before I cover it with aluminum foil just to make sure that the aluminum flavor doesn't leach into anything. But you would cover this with aluminum foil, uh, plastic wrap, then aluminum foil is how I would do it. And then put it in the refrigerator for um, a day or two, or you could put it in the freezer for up to three months. When you're ready to bake it, then that's when you're going to put the crumbs on the top. Don't put the crumbs on the top before you're um, ready to bake it because they will get soggy. Don't try to freeze this with the crumbs on the top either, at least not until after it's baked. Once it's baked, the crumbs still might get a little soggy, but when you warm them up, they'll crisp back up. And I'm going to put a thick layer on. And then I'm going to even it out. Press it down just a little bit. And that, my friends, is that. That goes right in the oven at 350 degrees for about 30 minutes or until the chicken is uh, cooked to 165. Here it is, y'all. It's got that beautiful golden brown um, buttery crust. The, sauce underneath is creamy and then the chicken is tender and the broccoli is tender. So delicious when it's all together. Um, one thing that I did not tell you is that you don't want to, if you're cooking fresh broccoli, you don't want to overcook your broccoli because it will cook more in the oven. So if you like your broccoli very soft, you want to cook it just a little beyond the crisp tender uh, spot. If you like your broccoli a little more crisp tender, then adjust the um, adjust your cooking time accordingly. Keep in mind though that it's going to cook a little bit more in the oven. 
when I make this with the chicken cut up into cubes, um, it takes about 30 minutes. This with the whole chicken breast took an hour. So you decide which way you want to do it. If you've got the time, using the whole chicken breast is a nice presentation, but if you don't, cut it up and, and make it a real, you know, real casserole. All right, so the next thing we need to do is see how it tastes. Of course, we already know it's going to be good, right? Look at that. Ooh. Delicious. Here it is, y'all, our finished um, cheddar and broccoli chicken. It smells so good. It's a You can see the layer of chicken breast, the broccoli, the cheese, and then the buttery cracker topping all together it makes it just, just right. Such a good dinner. It is literally um, fancy enough for company, but it's so easy to put together. And again, if you if you cut the chicken up in cubes, then it will uh, it will cook a lot faster, probably in about 30 minutes. But if you want to serve it as a whole chicken breast or um, part of a chicken breast, then uh, plan on it taking about an hour. Okay. All right. So I hope you'll come back. And I hope you'll subscribe, leave a comment, and I'll see y'all next week, okay? I'm not sure what we're going to cook, but it will be delicious. Love y'all. Bye.